Ah, a scallop. Scallops are probably best known for their beautiful shell, found in the works of Renaissance artists Botticelli and, and Titian. But one shell that you won't find on Southeast Alaska beaches is an oyster shell. But oysters are becoming an important part of the economy for some towns in Southeast Alaska. Towns whose timber-based economies were devastated with the closure of the pulp mills. Hi, I'm Pete Griffin. Let's talk about oysters and logging on the Tongass National Forest. For years, logging provided the economic bedrock for many Southeast communities. Nocatee is an example. It's a small town on the northwest side of Prince of Wales Island. If you want to go anywhere outside of this area, you come through here, um, regardless of whether you want fuel, you want to move a dump truck to an island, or you want to move people, because all of them have to go through Nocatee. So we set it up, and uh, this is what we have. Mall? Well, <laughs> no, no, there's no mall. I'd, I'd say the store is a, the focal point uh, of the community. Everybody seems to be in and out of there quite often. The post office is in the store, too, so everybody gets their mail there also. And uh, that's probably the hub, all right. The people that, that are here in Nocatee, it, it just amazes you. Um, the entrepreneurs are probably, I'm going to say, the biggest factor of people and that's the ones that say listen I know I can go up there and I can do this or that when you know and but they're all the, the majority of them are all looking for the one thing and that's the lifestyle it, that's first of course right very closely would be making a living Nocatee began as a logging camp when the logging company left in 2000 so did 25 percent of the local population Marvin Peterson was one of those who lost his job. You'd think just nothing but a ghost town, you know, because there was no economy and a few fishermen out, but they're not based right here. There's no facilities right here for fishermen. But, and no logging, there was just no industry. Even with the loss of forest jobs, however, many Nockety residents wanted to stay. The state land lottery helped by attracting newcomers who wanted to build. State grants helped fund a road connecting the homes. The state also built a new school. And some small logging operations continued to provide local jobs. But residents of the community of fewer than 200 realized they needed a steady source of revenue. What we have here on the north end, and specifically here in Nocatee, is Sea Otter Sound. And Sea Otter Sound is abundant in all kinds of resources with logging, but the hunting and fishing and the shellfish is uh, the aquaculture uh, industry is what we're basing our hopes and, and dreams on. Few individuals got to thinking that there's got to be some other way to start something. So come up with oyster. Well. They're still growing pretty fast, Art. Yeah, they Not are. Not faster than I expected. For this. Art is Art King. Like others in town, he and his wife Claire diversify their work. They rent a few small cabins and run the local laundry. Art King had a business career before moving to Nocatee. He put that into practice when the then president of the Homeowners Association asked him to look into establishing a community-owned oyster nursery had a few and now more oyster farmers in the area. And they had a very, very difficult time getting spat or getting quality spat. That's where Nockety saw an opportunity. A state grant paid for the construction of an oyster nursery, but they had to look elsewhere for money to buy the spat, the larval stage of oysters. The Forest Service came through with their economic development uh, people, Sandy Frost in particular, and George Doyle. So we got our spat and we started raising spat, and we didn't know much about what we were doing, but we were studying and learning. The 
Pockety Nursery buys the spat, each about the size of a grain of rice, and raises them in bins. A powerful paddle wheel circulates water through the bins. The water carries natural nutrients that feed the young oysters. After two years, the oysters are sold to Alaska oyster farmers. He's getting two years of labor knocked off of his cost, plus he's getting a return on his investment two years sooner. So this helps him, and then it helps us too, so we all benefit. The community has money to operate now. And it's more money than in the past, five times what Nockety Head received under the old state revenue sharing plan. The community only had uh, uh, revenue sharing about $3,600 a year coming in. They now have $20,000 so far this year. Art and Bob work to make the oysters more appealing to the farmer and ultimately the consumer. One way is to shape the shells. This is the size oysters that the farmers really like to get. And what we're doing is shaping these so that this up and down here is, is a deeper cup which produces more meat. And the way we do that is to knock this edge off that you see here. See how that comes off? When we rinse these oysters, we knock that edge off and what it ha happens in is this oyster gets deeper. That oyster will slowly grow out to this size and, and slowly give more cup to and makes a good looking uh, uh, oyster on the plate. Nockety residents believe their oyster nursery will provide an economic base for their future by meeting an increasing demand for seafood from the cold, clean waters of Southeast Alaska. It's gonna give the community a base and no need for, for taxes because we're an independent community with our own industry, actually. Well, I think it's gonna be great. It's gonna build There's more land coming up for sale. We probably are gonna have something that uh, you could sub call substantial probably within the next five to seven years. I look for Nockety and this area in Southeast to really be big in the uh, aquaculture business. We have very pristine waters. All of the indicators I see is that we're just gonna grow, grow, grow. Now the Nockety projects won't apply to every community, but they do show how people with an idea and the determination to carry it out can help improve their town's economy. For the Tongass National Forest, I'm Pete Griffin.